be in Rochester, 5 o'clock, the puck drop on Sunday. Then they'll con conclude their six-game road swing in Iowa Tuesday, 7 o'clock for that one. You can uh, log on to ChicagoWolves.com for all the latest info and video. Check your local listings for the designated cable channel in your community. Billy Gardner had a chance to sit down with the Syracuse forward and a good one, Jeff Platt, before the game tonight. Thank you, Pat. Uh, Jeff, right off the top, uh, it's been a struggle this year for your club, but just talk about the, the club in general and then what's happened or what's taking place so far. Well, you know, uh, after a slow start there, it's a team that, you know, really looks to grow each game. Uh, and, and in each game we go in and out of, uh, we try to learn as much as we can because uh, at this point, you know, the points and, uh, and the wins aren't racking up for us, so we have to take as many positives out of each game as possible. Let me ask you about the makeup of the team. Last year and, and years prior, uh, it's been a team that's been very explosive, but it seems like this makeup is a little bit different. Can you talk about that? Well, it really is. Uh, last season, we had a, a very offensively minded team. Uh, I think uh, quarterback by a player like uh, Andy Delmore and Mark Hardigan and Peter Sarno. And, and some of those players uh, we just don't have this year to uh, to exploit other teams' as, uh, uh, penalty kills and, and defense. So I think this season, uh, more than others, um, you know, we have to play a, a complete hockey game that you know, we might not be accustomed to, really. Gary Agnew was a coach here for six years. You have a new coach in uh, Ross Yates, and obviously there's a transition. There's been guys that have been here for more than one year or two years. Uh, how has he been so far? And it's got to be a little bit rough on him. It really is. You know, it's, it's a learning experience for him and, and for us also. You know, for him to make a transition from assistant coach to head coach is, is a substantial jump because um, he takes on new responsibilities that uh, he wasn't looked on. Um, when Gary was head coach, mm -hmm. but uh, no, the job he's done with us so far has been uh, has been very positive and excellent. You're a terrific story. This is amazing, actually. When you look at the way the game has changed, it's been in your favor. But first of all, I want to take us back. You had a pretty good year, a uh, couple years in uh, junior hockey. You, you scored uh, at will there, but uh, you didn't have a place to play. You weren't drafted. Can you tell us uh, what happened and what took place in your final year when you were looking for a job? Well, um, in my last season in the area there, I knew I had to, you know, essentially put the push on to do everything I could to continue playing hockey at a high level. Uh, I produced that season and, and went into the summer sort of open-minded and, and not sure what I was going to do. So I, I had signed an East Coast contract to at least cover my back in that sense. But uh, um, going to Columbus's uh, rookie camp, I, I had my sights set for an American League contract mm -hmm. and, and, and just to achieve as much as I could in a short amount of time. Tell me about those expectations at this level of the American Hockey League because you uh, got off to a great start and that actually leads into my next question about signing an NHL contract with Columbus. Well, um, you know, last season was a terrific start for me. I was very, very, very happy with uh, how that went leading into um, being signed to an NHL contract, which made me very proud that I had achieved uh, uh, that goal in my life. But uh, to be called up and to play those 15 games last season, I, I learned a lot and it was, it was just a great life experience for me. I believe your first game you were suited up uh, alongside of uh, Sergei Fedorov. How was that? Well, it's it's amazing just to uh, to be put in the same locker room, never mind the same line as as a player as prolific as he was. Um, you know, I grew up going to the Garden, watching him in the Red Wings and and Stevie Eisenman and them. Uh, you know, just it's watching fly around the ice, but to to sit beside him and to actually play with him was a great honor. You said uh, in an article I read last year about your friends in some of the fantasy leagues they were in, they had to switch some of the picks. How did that work? Well, it was funny <laughs> because this season I uh, I started the, the season in Columbus there. I played the one game. And my friends were all excited. Uh, mm -hmm. And then they dumped me right away, <laughs> of course, because I'm not going to produce points uh, in the American League. And then I told them I got called back up, so they're all fighting over me again. And <laughs> I just told them, you know, until I'm set full time, don't uh, don't waste your time picking, <laughs> picking me up. I think you pick a different player that uh, might produce a little better than me. There's a lot of characters on this team at Columbus. One we know very well, Benny Simon. And, uh, I want you to tell us a story about last year when you signed the NHL contract. You didn't have wheels at the time. You didn't have a car. You had to bum a lot of rides. But you were going to buy a car off your parents, I believe. Did that happen? No, it didn't, actually. <laughs> I was very close to uh, picking up my parents' Toyota Corolla, which would have been a, a, a decent car to, to be driving around in. But you know, being a car person and uh, achieving what I achieved, I really... Uh, I uh, just decided to reward myself more than anything. Very nice. And before I let you go, I think it was about a month ago, uh, you're a fan of rock and roll like we all are. God smacked was in town and a uh, pretty good story behind that. And tell us, uh, you went on the ice with uh, at least a member of uh, the group. Mm -hmm. Mark Mathot and I uh, got the opportunity to take the bass player out uh, the day of the concert and uh, skate around and work him a little. He took, took us out for lunch and then uh, uh, we, he got to show us what he does for a living. And uh, it was just an excellent show. Uh, Hooked us up with great tickets and, uh, you know, got to meet the band and everything. It was just, it, it was a real fun experience for me. That's a lot of headbanging. Jeff, thanks a lot. Uh, best of luck in uh, trying to get back to Columbus. Well, thanks so much for having me.
We'll be back with more of the second intermission after this.